Hey everybody, Huz here. So, if you probably saw the thumbnail or read the title, you're absolutely correct. I made a bad business animation. So this video was mainly inspired from Polyford's video where he made some robotic arms from Doc Ock, the villain from the 2004 and the 2021 Spider-Man films. So I really thought the concept was really well made. I scrubbed a bit through his tutorial to like see how hard, how easy it was and after doing that I thought yeah I should give this a shot really how hard could it how bad could it be so in the end it turned out really well I think I did a really good job I learned a lot from a tutorial that I really didn't know from blender and I decided to make this video to see to show you guys like what I made and what the animation will look like at the end of the video so if you guys are just here for the animation you guys are more than welcome to go to the end of the video but if you want to see how I did it like the in-depth view on how I how I modeled rigged did the camera work shading lighting all that stuff uh just feel free to continue watching and maybe like and subscribe it's free no pressure though I started off with this tutorial, basically, you know, he started off with a triangle, which was basically just a square with three vertices, if you think of it. So we did a couple of rotations to it, we extruded it, added a quick modifier to it, in which it got it to this cool, like, ninja star kind of look. So I actually didn't know, but that's actually the shape on what Doc Ock's arms are really like. So I, that kind of blew my mind and how he actually figured that out. So props to Polyfured on actually doing that. The second thing is that like, you know, basically, you know, I just gave it a, a pretty good distinctive shape. Uh, I kind of used his uh, formats on it where 50% where would be in this like smaller segment, but another... But the rest of it in the middle part would be really big and chonky. So that's what I did. And then yeah, I extruded it, gave it some shape, gave it some, you know, depth to it. And I made it exactly one meter tall, which is really crucial. So what I did afterwards, we duplicated that about 40 times. So I, a really cool shortcut that I didn't know was, I think it was Control R, I believe, or Shift R, I think. It really repeats the last action you did, which I think was really well done. Up to the point where we add armatures to the arm was pretty straightforward. After that, we added, I added an empty in which he said a tutor tutorial would allow us to move the arm freely and have the other segments follow it, which I think was really cool with inverse kinematics. The part where I got stuck though was when I had to, when I actually had to make the claw and actually create an armature for it, so... The part where I got stuck was that in his tutorial, he showed that he actually twisted the triangle 180 degrees and two other claws would shortly follow from that. But in my case, it did work, but it happened in a really weird way that I had a lot of trouble fixing. So it wasn't until I actually found this YouTube comment here, uh, shout out to this guy right here, for actually solving my issue. So if, if, he didn't have, if he didn't comment this down, I probably wouldn't be here making the video. I spent like a good 20-30 minutes trying my best to figure out what went wrong but I think in the end I had to reset the scale and location for it because I think I may have like done some sort of like weird edit that I may have not been aware of. But in the end I, I got it fixed and yeah that was pretty much it for the claws so when I moved one claw the other two claws would follow shortly after which I think was really cool. Uh, this basically works with a skin and an array modifier which I which basically has a function to create an armature once one arm and the claw was done and they were all joined with the proper empties and normals and all that I had to basically find out a good way on like how this would actually work on the vest I on the custom made vest I made for the future soldier so really I, I just did it in like a funny way really I kind of like wanted two of them to stick up and two of them to stick below. I think that would have made, made a nicer design honestly. And if you think of it, he can kind of like slide in through narrow walls much easier. I know it's hard to picture it, but like if his vest can make it through, definitely his arms will be able to. So, you know, I thought that would be a cool design detail to add. So after I, um, so after I got all four arms attached and I played around with the animation and I played around with them a bit of times, 
I kind of understood the limits between it. Uh, Poly4 did make a disclaimer that the rig isn't perfect. There are some limitations. So if you bend one of the claws a little too far in some one way and don't rotate it enough, it's going to clip through the other side because it has to correct itself. There were some comments in his YouTube video that did find a few workarounds through it but i never tried any of them because like at this point i was like okay let's just get this done i'm kind of tired or i'm just tired of this the main reason is that like i spent like a good 30 minutes uh trying to fix the claw in the first place but i'm happy that i got this far i think it was pretty much ready for like the camera work and all that so after a while after getting some quick keyframes and just a few shots in i basically got to work on animation so the first shot that I really wanted to do was the part where actually in No Way Home where Doc Ock actually comes out of the highway underpass and like is actually revealed. Mainly the second shot and where he's actually talking to Peter which I think was pretty cool like where he says What have you done with my machine? Uh, I tried my best to mirror the shot even trying my best to get the positioning and the rotation of the arms correct. Although I did a little bit of a freehand style towards this kind of approach, uh, I think most most people who watch No Way Home would understand the shot. I tried my best to even mirror the camera work and lighting that went behind it, but I'm no blender master or guru or anything, so I just did what I could. Really, I I, I don't know how I did, but if it looks good enough to like that you guys are watching this video, then I think I did a pretty good job nonetheless. So I spent like a good one, two hours animating. Uh, you guys can probably, you guys are probably watching the time lapse video on how I actually did the animation for it. So when making the color palette for this thing, I kind of went for like the Future Soldier here, with a bit of like a Batman kind of vibe, because you know I'm a kind of, I'm kind of a fan of Batman here. So what I did was I kind of gave it like a steely gray. I tried actually copying a bit of Doc Ock's actual like color into it, so I actually got like an eyedropper, I got the hex code and I actually inputted it, so it gave me somewhat of an accurate base color to give it, and then I added some, I lowered the roughness and added some metallic value to it. Afterwards that, it was really all down to the claws, so the claws, I, I kind of changed it up a bit. So I know in like the actual movies that Doc Ock's claws would be red or blue, depending on like who's in control of the inhibitor chip or his higher brain function in the 2004 movie, I believe. I kind of went with like red here because like I kind of want to have some lore for the future soldier one day and where I actually attempt to make somewhat of a short movie. Like that's my final goal like in uh, for the future soldier one day. I plan to make a movie for it. So, you know, stay tuned for that guys. Maybe one day it'll happen. I don't know really. So I gave the claws a bit more metallicness. I don't know if that's a word, but I, uh, that's what I tried doing. I really wanted to have the glow of the claws really shine off like the actual pincers of it, which I think looks really sick when you add like a bloom or some ambient oculization. But after adding the claws, Pretty much that was the color palette. If you guys could probably see, it references the Future Soldier mask, which I think was, which I think is pretty cool. One small detail people don't know is that if you guys have seen like my previous animation work for the Future Soldier from Bad Business, you guys probably know that the neck is yellow. But somewhere during actually making this, I'm like, I should make the neck black, just like the actual mask for the Future Soldier. So that's what I did, and I think it was, oh, turned out an overall better result. I kind of try to throw a bit more realism because like when you're wearing like a mask or something it kind of has to go around your neck in order to like stay in place so that's what I tried doing here I think I did I think it looks better honestly I'm, I'm probably gonna keep it like that from now on because I feel like having just that bit of yellow stick out kind of makes the thing a little cartoony and not as like cool looking pretty much when the animation was done I had everything from the shader to like all the fine details in the animation done and the camera work finished. The last thing was to get the background ready. So I really tried my best to like get a scene from far from No Way Home where like Doc Ock actually appears. It, it didn't look super good because I didn't know the lighting that the VFX team used in, while ma while they made the movie. So, and I'm really bad at telling where light comes. So I I, I kind of scrapped that idea midway. I went my with my basic. Uh, I kind of went with my basic enclosure in terms of lighting. It's really just like a cube and then where I just bevel it a couple of times and, and I shade smooth it. 
The animation was actually meant to be 60 frames in length, but later I pretty much stretched everything out, added a bit of extra filler uh, keyframes within the animation itself to actually make it longer. The final animation is actually 255 frames exactly. So what I did at the end was kind of like I I added like a really cool twist through where one of the claws actually like comes in, actually comes to your face and actually twists and breaks it. So I, I know it sounds gruesome when I say it like that, but uh, in my head and on paper, it actually sounded really cool. I think somewhere in the sound design, I actually added a small neck cracking in which you guys will see at towards the end of the video. I did, I did do some extra work off camera, but I forgot to record it because that's a really bad habit of mine on like not recording when I'm actually in the zone and I'm actually putting some hours behind Blender. Because A, I really like to record my Blender work for like in the future because like I really want to make more videos like this where I actually talk about like my Blender work. But yeah, I did create a couple of animations. I did play a bit around with the camera, which I think I learned a lot from. So for example, I kind of stuck with two versions of it. So the normal classic version, as you guys may have seen in my previous bad business animation test for the Future Soldier, I think it was one of the older shaders that I used. So there wasn't really too much of, there wasn't too many light bounces or, and the helmet wasn't super glossy. I kept the default sky as to like a little bit of a purplish pinkish tint to it to kind of like bring out the highlights a little more in the future soldier. Um, I did do a little bit of extra camera work. Uh, there you'll see a couple of extra animations that I put in together. But yeah, here you guys go. Here is my animation.